All right, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, UFC, uh, what is this, uh, whatever this one is, the UFC card um, from a betting perspective. And again, this is completely different than my DFS analysis, and I'm going to continue to discuss the difference for the first couple of minutes of this video and give me a, a little bit of my history and a little bit of the history of sports betting, <laughs> sort of. Um, so... The difference between analyzing from a DFS perspective and analyzing from a betting perspective is this. When you analyze from a DFS perspective, you're presuming that the, for the most part, that the lines uh, that are created by Vegas, which are then adjusted by, by action, it, is somewhat efficient, right? And then you make your DFS lineups and proje projections uh, accordingly. Uh, however, um, when you're trying to bet on the actual fights or on the actual props, you're making it the exact opposite assumption. You're making the assumption that there's something wrong with the lines, that you have some kind of an edge over what these lines are. And uh, depending on what you're betting on, whether it be stocks or, or basketball games or NFL games or MMA, MMA fights, you're, you're kind of fighting this VIG that makes it even harder. So it's not, it's not just that you have to be, you have to know which way the line is wrong, but you have to know which way the line is wrong to also take care of the VIG. You know, like if you're if you're betting on a stock and think that the price is wrong, you only have to deal with basically a one cent spread. You know, if you want to buy something, it's like twenty dollars and one cent, and you want to sell it to twenty dollars. So you only have to be right by a little bit. Um, when you're betting on the NBA or in the NFL. I mean, you could get 105 on either side, but usually like 110. So you have to be right by by that 10 cent spread. With MMA, you actually have to be right by more because the 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 vig and the spreads are just a little bit a little bit wider. And and as you move up in odds, the 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 spreads on those are even wider than that. So that's kind of the presumption uh, when you're betting the M an MMA is that you have an edge above and beyond. Not only you have an edge. Not only are the lines wrong, but you know which way and you know which way by a, a decent amount. Now, again, that's not to say that you just can't bet if you don't have that kind of edge, because, listen, betting is not just about making money. Right. It's about having fun and ha having action, all that stuff. But, you know, it, when you are going to bet and you, your goal is to at least minimize the, the, the lack of edge, right, or minimize the, the, the big or to maybe have some kind of an edge, you have to. You have you have a lot to overcome. So the way I kind of handle that and the way I analyze all types of betting, whether it, what, in situations like that, whether it be stocks, whether it be basketball, whether it be, be the MMA is is yes, to to assume sort of that the line is accurate. But to be able to gauge the psychology of the markets. In a way that you can guess or at least theorize how much of that line is caused by stuff that doesn't matter okay by stuff that doesn't matter i would say you know recency bias um uh, if, if one story of a stock or a basketball team is way too easy to tell whatever side just kind of feels the most comfortable whatever side is just kind of just for whatever reason just just over owned by one side of the ball, you know, and, and you see that a lot. You see, you see a spread like in a football game. Let's take one example this weekend, uh, Seattle versus Carolina. Like if you ask like a thousand, you know, 10,000, just average people, what should Seattle be favored over Carolina? They would probably say six, but it's only three and a half. And the way I kind of look at that is, is there's probably something in Carolina that everybody's missing, but this spread is only three and a half. So, I think the Carolina is probably a sharp, the sharp side. And that's sort of the way I look at, at all things, you know, like in stocks, if someone tells me about a stock that's trading at $50 and, oh my God, it's a leader in the industry and they have great management and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, so what, what, that sounds like a nice, easy story to tell. It's probably a short, you know, because probably the, the stuff that's incorporated into the price already, the thing that's, you know, that, that's keeping it up there is just way too obvious and way too, I don't say irrelevant, but I, I guess so. It, it's, it's, 
it's way so obvious that that you really should should not even consider it. And so that's the way I kind of look at MMA is is and in all sports, but specifically MMA, is I wait, you know, until later in the week. So I was have a chance to gauge what kind of the industry takes are and the overwhelming consensus over what people think of these fights and figure out which which side is just the ignored side and which side is just the the cutesy side and we'll we try to fade that and i'll tell you since we've been doing this we've been coming up with some pretty good results you know and i'm not saying the results met you know the entire story but you know we're tr trying to get good ev plays or at least good enough ev plays and i think they're analyzing things this way they look at what's worked for everything else in my life so it's been working in MMA so far. So you have to be prepared to be uncomfortable. You have to be prepared to, to bet on stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. It, basically, the more that you analyze the fights on your own and the more content you absorb, the less comfortable you're going to be with what I recommend. Okay, But nonetheless, it's certainly fun, and we're going to continue doing it this way. All right, so first fight, we have Cameron Simon versus Stephen Coslo. You have two guys that nobody has heard of okay and one of the guys is minus 360 and the other guy is plus 295 so we have here here is like kind of the overwhelming kind of take on this fight okay is that okay Stephen Coslo has never been out of the first round all right um all of his wins are round one by submission and you have it inside the distance line that's kind of kind of re reflecting that and they're saying that that if, if Coslo's can have any chance at all it's going to be by submission but most likely you know simon's just going to piece him up on the feet and, and and beat him up okay um i don't see a particular lean towards what side people are taking because honestly nobody wants to lay the 360 with simon and nobody really knows much about Coslo, so they're nobody's really taking the dog shot either if anything, what people might be doing is is taking a shot on this under one and a half, because again, all Coslo has literally never been out of the first round, and that seems to be the side people are on. So what we're going to do is we're going to bet the over here. Um, the only question is whether it's going to be over one thirty, uh, over one point five, or maybe go by decision. Um, so let's just see uh, fight lines. Uh, actually fight props fight to go the distance is plus 175 i think what i'd rather do instead of getting too greedy is just take the 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 um the over one and a half minus 130 okay um and again what we're going to do is we're literally betting everything on this card okay and i'm not saying one bet's better than the other i just kind of don't roll that way and we're going to bet the same amount every single fight. So, and it's going to be 180 each time. Um, and we're probably not going to be able to put these in because, again, when you're on Zoom, they don't let you really put anything in uh, on the sports board. Um, so let's move on to uh, next fight, which is Victor Salvador, Vinicius Salvador versus Daniel Da Silva. And this to me is is, is pretty easy. So you have Salvador, who's, you know, he's four, 14 fights. I think he has 13 wins or whatever it is. He, and every one of his fights, he's finished. And you have Daniel Da Silva. And this is what I'm telling you, you go through. You'll, you'll hear some takes that Silva's live. You'll hear some takes that Salvador is, 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 is a lock. Um, but what you will always hear is that this fight is going to finish in the first round. Okay? That Da Silva... Is kill or be killed, and he once he's out, he just can't make it out of the first round. Um, otherwise, he's just totally toast. And this is going into the first round. So what we're going to do once again is we are going to go the over, over one point five plus one seventy. Okay, and again one eighty. All right, moving on. You have T.J. Brown versus Eric Silva. So. As far as the money line goes, I mean, here's the thing. I have – the the problem is this is not one of the more analyzed fights out there because there are other fights that are more talked about. 
But what I, one thing I can just promise you is that the the ratio of people playing Silva over Brown is maybe ten. To, okay, and the fact of the matter is is that TJ it's it's a pick and fight. So I don't exactly get it. So it's one of those things where if 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 like ninety percent of the people are taking Silva and yet it's still a pick them. Well, you could just give me TJ Brown in that spot. So I will take TJ Brown minus one eighty, uh, minus one ten for one eighty. Okay, Billy Quarantino versus uh, versus uh, Alexander Hernandez. Okay, so I don't exactly quite get this one. Okay, because Maybe I just know a little too much. So, so listen, I've seen Billy Quarantino till a bunch, and every time, I mean, he puts on a good show. He has unlimited cardio and, and whatever it is. And for whatever reason, I mean, I'm, I'm getting all this freaking Hernandez love, and most specifically, I'm getting Hernandez. You know, it is very dangerous to to knock Quarantino out because they say that Quarantino just takes a lot of damage. Um, so those are the sites I'm not taking. I'm not taking Hernandez. I'm certainly not taking Hernandez under inside the uh, inside the distance. What I think we're going to do, so it's going to be Quarantillo. I don't really particularly want to just lay the 180. So what we're just going to do is 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 this. One take that I've heard is Quarantillo in the third round. The idea being that he just grinds him out with cardio, grinds him out with cardio, and eventually finishes him. So I've heard too much of that one, so we can't play that. So what we're going to just do is play Quarantillo by decision. So Quarantillo by decision is probably the least, the, the, the most least likely take that I've seen. So Quarantillo by decision plus 225. Good enough for me. Um, okay, moving on. Chris Curtis versus Joaquin Buckley. Let's pull this up. Uh, all right. Chris Curtis versus Joaquin Buckley. And I was expecting to be somewhat different on this, but I have to tell you that that I, I don't I just don't know what what it is, but the, the entire civilized world is just on Chris Curtis here. And, and the, the idea being that they're saying Joaquin Buckley is just kind of low volume. And that Chris Curtis is just gonna just just out volume in and just kind of, and 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 just beat him this way. Um, I was expecting there would be much more love for the Joaquin Buckley side. I mean, the guy just swings freaking wild, you know. And and he's got wrestling. the The other thing that I've heard like a lot is that Chris Curtis has an incredible takedown defense. And while that might be true, you know, um, remember past performances don't necessarily guarantee a future results. And um, the fact is, is that Buckley, I think, is just got, getting slept on a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is is go for a take that, I mean, it's kind of hard because Curtis hasn't really been knocked out, if ever. Um, and certainly not since gotten close uh, in a while. So I'm gonna we're going to take Buckley inside the distance um, or Buckley by KO here. So let's... Um, Let's just see. Let's see what some of these lines are. How about a particular round? Buckley round one plus 300. I don't think that's the idea. How about Buckley round two? How about Buckley round three at 900? I mean, he's had these before. Is it worth a shot at plus 900? Let's take a look at the KO props here. You have... Buckley by KO plus 150. Seems low. Buckley by submission, 2,200. Wow. You know, Buckley by T by KO seems so brutal that it just might work. So, so we're going to do this at a what looks like a terrible price. Buckley plus 150 to win by TO, KO or TKO or DK. All right. Uh, moving on, we have uh, Edmund Shabazian versus Dacha Lambula. So th this one I, I'm, I'm pretty confident in. All right. So you have Shabazian, who is 
either depends on, on who you ask, either a fraud or just hadn't lived up to his potential or any of this stuff. Okay. And at the very least, you know what I'm getting? Shabazian is really doesn't have that much cardio. Um, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna do, we're gonna play this. We're gonna play Shabazian by finish in round two. I hope we're getting a good price on that. Let's see. Round prop. Shabazian round two plus 400. Good enough for me. And these are always been, been a little annoying. Round three. Wow. 10 to one. Boy, it, it, it's so tempting. It is so tempting to do that. To prove all the cardio haters wrong. All right, we're 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 gonna we're gonna wimp out. We're gonna say, boy oh boy, look, I encourage you guys to to pick one of them. I, I honestly don't know which one, but I'm gonna go with Shabazian round two. I'll be kind of a wimp plus four hundred. Um, moving on, Raul Rojas versus Jay Perrin. Um. All right, so Raul Rojas, you should see this press conference. I mean, this is this is the guy everybody's going to want to hate. Okay, he, he – first of all, this is what you're hearing about Jay Rosas, about Rosas. He's only 17. Um, he hasn't beaten anybody. And he was talking a lot of trash, saying that Jay Perrin does not belong in the UFC. And when you watch the the – the the uh the interview of Perrin, I mean, you really want this guy to win. I mean, you, you really do. Um, um but <laughs> there's a little bit too much of this Rosas is only 17 business. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play the guy, we're gonna play this in a kind of annoying way. We're going to play Rosas by decision. Okay. Um, we, th I think that he's got the takedown ability to kind of like, you know, kind of keep Perrin away, you know, keep Perrin on the ground or whatever, but I don't think the Perrin is going to submit. So we're going to go Rosas by decision, provided we get like plus 300. So let's just see what it is. Rosas by decision it's plus 180. So we can't do that. Rosas by submission plus 175. Can't do that. So I guess we got to pick him for, by a round again. All right. So round prop. All right. Let's do it. Rosas round three or round two. Same same issue. How about plus 900? Rosas round three plus 900. We'll give Perrin the, 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 the chance to be durable. But then eventually Rosas just kind of wars on him too much and eventually gets a submission. How about that? All right. Um, moving on here. All right. This one I'm this one I'm pretty sure of. So you have Rosenstreak versus Chris Dawkus. Uh, listen, I'm I, I'm a believer here. So you have Rosenstruck. He he's these are heavyweights. You know, Rosenstruck has that quote unquote death touch. And then you have this horrible narrative that's been passing around that for some reason because Dawkus's brother got KO'd in his last fight that there's something about the Dawkus brothers that just make them non-durable and then you have Dawkus who's basically got KO'd in his last two fights um so what we're gonna do here is again I, I hate to bite into to buy into this but I have to say I want to add my little take here only because no one else has talked about this in the media day they asked Dawkus, oh, so what are you going to be doing here? You know, do you care who you're fighting? He's like, no, I don't care. But like, so you think I'm going to stand and stand and trade with this guy? I mean, yeah, you, I'd have to be some kind of idiot. And I have to tell you, I, 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 I believe it. So what we're going to do, and this is like almost impossible to happen, but we're, we're going to pick this fight to go to decision. So we're going to go fight props, fight to go the distance plus 350. 
Good luck. But that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, okay, Bryce Mitchell versus Ilya Tapuri. This is this is this is easy. Okay. I, I, this is a fight. Let's pull him up. Pull this up. This is, this is really just criminally easy. You have Ilya Tapuri is minus 140. Bryce Mitchell is plus 120. They're both basically undefeated. And and Ilya Tapuria is basically 95% owned by the betting public. I, I just not that I don't get it, I get it. And this is what you hear. That Bryce Mitchell, yes, he was able to out wrestle Barboza, but you know, Ilya Tapuria, he's he's got good wrestling and grappling of his own. Bryce Mitchell, he's he's owned everywhere. Ilya Tapuria is just much better on the feet. He's much, he's even just equal on the ground. This line is wrong. And Ilya Tapuria is just kind of a lock here. This is what I'm hearing. I've I've heard takes that, that this could be right, that it's not even remotely competitive. Well, if it's not remotely competitive and no one's taking Mitchell, why is it only minus 140 plus 120? Good enough for me. Uh, we will take Bryce Mitchell. Um, probably should take him by decision. But I'm only getting an extra 125. Like Bryce Mitchell with plus 120 or Bryce Mitchell by decision plus 250. You know what? Let's do it. Let, let, let's, let's play Bryce Mitchell by decision. The only issue I have with, with these pure wrestlers is they don't really get these decision wins. You know, the, 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 the judges have really not been liking these guys too much. So, like, if Taporia does just hit him a bunch of times, but Mitchell does get all the takedowns, um, it's uh, – you could you could be in for a robbery here. Um, so, let's, let's just – just in case he gets the finish, we'll just play him plus the 180, 120. Just, just in case. Okay, uh, next one, moving on. Darren Till versus Drikus Duplicis. Um, yeah, this is another one. Uh, Duplicis, minus 175, Till plus 150. Um, not a lot of narrative here except to say that, again, Till has just done nothing in, like, a long time except for hanging out with with, with Hamza Sachmaev. Um that's the only thing that bothers me about this is that tiny little bit of narrative coming in on Till saying that he's been hanging out with Shemayev, so maybe he's been improving his wrestling, which which to me that's that's a bunch of nonsense. Um but I think there's a little bit more steam on Duplesis than Till. So we are gonna take Till plus the 150. And again, this is pretty gross. Um, but we are gonna do it. Till plus the 150. For 180. We have a good amount of combinations of impossible underdogs and impossible favorite round props. We're doing some good stuff. Okay. Ponzinibbio versus Alex Morono. So this fight is is was on short notice. Um and unfortunately it has not gotten you know enough uh analysis. Okay. Um but one thing I will say about Morono is that I think in his last fight, he did win as an underdog, um, which is makes a little recency bias, I guess. I don't know. This this is the one fight I just might pass because I really just don't have anything on. But we got to try something. So you know what you want to try? Let's, let's do something fun in this fight. Let's... Ponzinibbio round one. I mean, that's something you could do. I mean, Rono is in on short notice. So, okay. So he's in on short notice. Let's, let's, let's try it. I mean, either send, send, but, but that's probably what other people are going to think. Let's do, let's do a little, little homework here. Hold on. Let, let me just real quick. Let me look at Alex Morono. And we're going to, I just want to make sure this is the same the same guy here. Okay, so Alex Morono. Right. So he beat Semmelsberger as an underdog. All right. So maybe there is a, a little bit of, of recency biasing with him. So we'll take Ponzinibbio. And because it's short notice, we'll take Ponzinibbio inside the distance. Ponzinibbio by KO. So let's do that. Uh, fight lines. Um, winning method. Ponzinibbio by TKO plus two fifteen. We'll we'll give it a shot. 
boy, oh boy, this feels bad. And you know what? It feels bad. So that's why we're doing it. If you had to skip one, that would be the one to skip, by the way. Okay, Patty Pimlet versus Jared Gordon. Um, everybody wants to, this is what I'm hearing, all right? Patty Pimlet, you're going to fade Patty Pimlet eventually. Um, he's he's a fraud. Not that he's a fraud. He's just, you know, overrated. And you're going to fade him eventually. But this is not the time to fade him. And that's what they've been saying for the last two fights. And I will say this. In his last two fights, he was losing after the first round in both of them. So for all the people that said we're going to wait to fade him, we'll fade him now. So we'll take Jared Gordon plus the 210. Probably should just bet him by decision. He's not finishing him. Um, can I get more than plus 300? Ooh, I get plus 450. Jared Gordon by decision. No, the problem, though, is, again, you get this decision e equity that they're going to give it to Patty Pimblett if it's close. So we're not going to do that. Um, just in case he gets a submission uh, or something like that. We're going to go Jared Gordon just plus the two teams. Okay, just a couple of more, or is that it? Or is just the main event left? Let's see. Um, Rono. Okay, so last fight we have uh, Jan Blahovic versus Ma Magomed and Kalaya. This is just, just a piece of cake. Okay. This is what we got. Ankalaya is boring. Uh, he just is measured. He doesn't put a stamp on it. And although he's probably going to win, it's probably going to be a boring fight. So the only question is, what round are we going to pick him to finish? Because we're definitely doing that. All right. How about we're going to take a look at it. If we were real geniuses, we'd, we'd go like the first round. But let's just take a look. We're definitely picking a round. Now, plus 350 is no good. How about like Ankali around four? You get 1,400. We're, we're going to do this. 1,400 in round four to get out for the night after we're losing everything else. Remember, we're playing 13 fights, right? So when we go 0-12, we're going to have this one left to break even. So there it is. We're going to play 13 fights for 2340, 180 each. But let's review what they are. Uh, Samen Kozlo over one and a half, minus 130. We have Salvador De Silva over one and a half, plus 170. TJ Brown minus 110. We have talent Quarantillo by decision, plus two and a quarter. Joaquin Buckley by TKO, plus 150. Shabazi in round two, plus 400. Raul Rojas in round three, plus 900. Wow. Uh, fight to go the distance. Rosenstreet Dawkins plus 350. Let's go. Bryce Mitchell, plus 120. Um, Darren Till, plus 150. Good luck with that. Hans by TKO, plus 215. I like that, actually. Jared Gordon, plus 210 against Patty. And then Magomed and Kaliev to get even for the night, plus 1,400 in exactly round four. Let me see. Is it going to let me put this in? Let's see. Ooh. Nah, see, you can't. All right. Uh, I will put it in, I promise you, after I stop this. Um, and, uh, yeah, good luck, everybody.